Well, peeps, welcome to SF Liberal Buzz. And I, we have a lot to cover today. We are having a tug of war in the cannabis community once again with uh, the industry and the patients. And we're really excited that there's a new initiative to vote on in 2014. We're going to try it. 2014. The sooner, the sooner the better. The sooner the better. So here's what we've been tweeting lately. Uh, let's have let's have a look at that. Uh, let's scroll down. Today's topic on SF Liberal Buzz, we're talking about the Cannabis and Hemp Freedom Act. Uh, and this website to go to to find out more about it is savecannabis.org. So uh, that's one thing we've been, we're going to be talking about soon. We have a few callers calling in. DJ Kute of the uh, Patient Advocacy Network will be calling last. And our first two callers will be from savecannabis.org. And they are responsible for the language in some of these. Uh, in, in this initiative, which is an open language, which means that you can contact them. Just go to the website, savecannabis.org, there in the tweet. Just go to SF Liberal Buzz, you know, that's the hashtag, you know. Right, the <laughs> yep. hashtag. We got some, yeah, we got two new laws coming down the pipe, and one is good and one isn't. So, and there, there's more, probably more than one, but this affects California, the one we like, because it, it actually puts cannabis in the hands of the patients and the and ordinary person and it covers hemp and you know, medicinal which will be exempt from taxes and everything else will be taxed. Right, so it, it covers be. hemp, it covers um, adult use and um, it covers medical cannabis and the thing that's been really uh, inspiring about how John Lee and David Hodges and DJ have kind of organized this as an open forum. You know, you can watch the language progress. You can be a part, you know, sort of a part of the theatrics of creating great policy for California, mm. which is is not something that, that that's uh, been going on. And then we have a whole other group of people, um, sort of the, the old guard, who don't uh, want to put anything on, uh, on the ballot until 2016 and are actually... Um, Why? Tell them why. Well, I'm not sure why. Hello, you're on the air at FSEC Liberal Buzz. Name, please. Hello? Hi, I hope I didn't call too early. It's John Lee. Hey, John, welcome. No, you didn't call too early at all. Tell us a little bit about about uh, the, the ballot initiative for our state. Well, I'd love to. Where should we start? Why don't you start at the beginning and what motivated you and Dave Hodges to, to put to put this out to to cannabis activists to work on? Well, I have a couple pieces probably that I can share with you. Dave's gonna join me in a little while and he's on his way back from Sacramento right now. We have a lot of exciting news that what got us started to, at the very beginning for me at least was uh, I'm a patient. Uh, that's really uh, where I began in this industry, and I got involved in San Jose politics and some of the issues that San Jose politicians were struggling with during our times when we exploded here with over 100 dispensaries, and they had a difficult time creating ordinances, and we eventually had to repeal an ordinance here in San Jose, and I participated heavily in that activity, and also I did my best to become knowledgeable about the industry and the owners and operators of most all the facilities here in the area so that I thought I could volunteer to help what at the time I knew was becoming the civil rights issue of our time. And uh, as I grew to get involved in the industry and in the community, um, I participated in a lot of the organizations that, that were trying to develop policy and procedures to, to, to address all these things. And San Jose has continued even to this day, as you know, the struggle with proper issues. In fact, we've just passed uh, now to a 10% tax uh, for medical cannabis on top of the regular sales tax here. So uh, difficult times here. But uh, through that process, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of the advocates uh, and activists in the area and the people that really mattered, not only uh, to the medical world, but also in the, the hemp and uh, uh, don't use cannabis world. And uh, I was able to meet with uh, Dave Hodges, along with several other strong advocates. But Dave in particular uh, 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 was uh, interesting to me as he was really involved in the details of what was going on with uh, uh, the government and primarily in the DOE and local government and he was writing uh, documentation and ordinances and communicating 
at a level that nobody else had really done. And uh, my background just uh, on the side was from the corporate world. I'm a, a corporate businessman and uh, I've worked in that environment all my life. I saw things as a business, not necessarily just a movement, but a business that needed uh, a stronger uh, operation and management. And uh, I, I saw getting uh, uh, this program just as important as whether I was getting a semiconductor widget or a pencil shop. There wasn't really no difference. It was how do you run things, how do you set goals and standards, how do you assign action, how do you take responsibility, and how do you follow up. And I was in the process for a couple of years. Obviously, in 2004, there was a horror story. Uh, there were about, uh, as we know, six different efforts put together to try to get on the ballot, and as soon as that was even begun, we knew we were doomed to fail because there's no way to split the advocacy and the funding uh, to get on the ballot in that, in that regard, and uh, obviously we failed. We didn't get on the ballot. That's and uh, right. I, I, I always knew... I'm sorry? That's right. I remember going to the Canada debates with the six different um, proposals, and it was just... it was It was sad because... You know, you don't want to confuse the voter, <laughs> you know? No, you certainly don't, and that was, that was the problem for a long time. There were a lot of powerful advocates, there were a lot of brilliant people in California, there was a lot of tremendous writing uh, being done, but uh, it was disjointed. So I watched that process, and then uh, as I had an opportunity to work closely with Dave and then uh, observe the Prop 19 situation, too, I was able to... Uh, uh, Join the SaveCanvas.org organization. Dave was the original founder of the website uh, forum, and uh, uh, I joined on that and have become the moderator that, for that uh, forum for the last year. That allowed me not only to do all the personal work, but to observe all the activity and input from uh, well over a thousand people that, that participated in the forum, but happening throughout the state and the world, in fact. But, uh, that got me more encouraged that uh, since we failed in 2012 and Prop 19 uh, also uh, uh, did not come through, that we needed to do something different. And uh, they took a strong lead, as you know, to produce the original document uh, for what is currently the Cannabis and Head Freedom Act. And what he did by that and what we did as a group effort was to create something that's never been done before. We have a, I think you hit on it earlier, I didn't get to hear your Issue, but we really have a true grassroots, open source uh, situation here. Now, for the first time, uh, this document was written by the people. This has been uh, available to the people for uh, almost 10 months now, I believe, or more. We introduced it last year in October and November through a series of meetings open to all advocates. We've had continual communication with them, not only through the forum, but in direct contact through uh, all the various uh, uh, mass media forums and social media forums. And we've traveled the state uh, for the last year and meeting and being on radio with other folks down in Southern California, as you know, with a great advocate, Randy Swingle, and, and on and on and on. And uh, as you know, well know, we've had the opportunity finally to coordinate the state and, uh, and fortunate enough to, to be able to partner with uh, DJ and uh, the Fish Advocacy Network. Uh, so this has really exploded to the point that we realize we have an opportunity to do this in 2014. And uh, there's ask, nothing. Why, I'm sorry? I, could I just ask why on earth would anyone wait till 2016 when we've got people in prison, you know, foster kids that need to go to back to loving homes? And I, I read some harsh uh, criticism, even by uh, Attorney James Anthony, about um, that this effort was naive. And I just feel like it's the exact opposite. I feel like it's infused with a lot of intelligence and caring. But is there something, you know, why would we wait till 2016? Well, I certainly don't want to argue their side for it, but, they, but they, we have to be aware of the topics and the reason. And of course, the, we know with James very well. Um, I think there's some obvious reasons. Uh, a lot of people that have uh, believed that uh, 2016 uh, allowed us more time to develop uh, grassroots and, and more legislative efforts to support this. But that argument may have been appropriate to even a year ago or so when we uh, pre pac decision, pre Riverside decision from the Supreme Court, and before the current polling rates. Uh, we didn't used to rely too much on the polls, but they're so evident now, as we all know, that uh, medical use is pulled out in the high 60s and uh, a complete adult use is pulling about 50%. So uh, not only that, but the momentum gained by the Colorado and Washington efforts, uh, people dissuade that, but it is reality. And so 
when people argue about 216, another big argument that they try to present is that that would be an unpresidential election year and that if we try to do this on a non-presidential election year, there's some negatives attached to it. But uh, that argument is no longer really uh, relevant any longer because uh, one of the key points that occurs on an off-presidential year is the various legislative and lower level elections are done to begin momentum towards the presidential election and the folks that are currently in our camp, primarily the Democrats, although we're certainly reaching out to Republicans and Libertarians and all others, but the groups that are developing, preparing for a presidential year are more active in this time. So this is really a, a critical time. Uh, another point to, uh, to that argument is the fact this is indeed less costly. Uh, because when you work on a non-presidential election year, everything from all the uh, advertising and other funds that are necessary to support it are, are uh, less costly than off year. Uh, and there's a couple of arguments that Dave can get on too uh, when he gets on that uh, are pretty specific. But uh, those are a couple of the arguments that folks use. But once again, a lot of the discussion was uh, maybe about uh, even six months ago or certainly a year or two ago. But uh, it's becoming less uh, pertinent as we can uh, begin to as you know, gain more momentum and more support from several major groups. And uh, that's what I would leave up to, uh, 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 Lee, that uh, we have some announcements that uh, folks should be able to make here shortly. But we are indeed dedicated to the 2014 ballot. We're able to announce that. Uh, and most people have seen that progress and know that we, uh, we're leading to this. And uh, we have just this last week organized the infrastructure necessary to open this up for uh, 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 public uh, public knowledge. And at that point, we're, we're comfortable to say that we are indeed going to be on the 2014 ballot. What's key to this document is there still is opportunity for the public to participate in this. We have not yet locked down the document for final draft. So there's still an open source document. You, know, you and anybody else can go to that document still and provide comments. Uh, and then we continue to look that up until the, the final draft has to be submitted to the Secretary of State for uh, what's called Title One summary. And so uh, we're very, very uh, close to that and ready to make a lot of announcements related to it. And in fact, when Dave comes in here, uh, hopefully he might even have some more information. Uh, but that's uh, a little summary of what led us all the way up to this. Uh, and uh, I hope that gives you a good idea of where we're at right now. Absolutely. Um, one thing I just got to keep reiterating is is this open source and the inclusion of you know anybody to really look at the policy and the language. You know, I've only been in the community for 10, 15 years now, but I've never really seen anything be so so globally open to um, commentary and criticism and and um, taking all of that in and usually the excuse is well that would just you know make sure that nothing ever gets done but actually I see it being one of the most efficient policy discussions that I've seen and that includes policy discussions that I've seen you know with elected officials and their legislative aides um, and I just really want to thank you John Lee for your your coordinating efforts and your moderation of, of the, the SaveCannabis.org, uh, which is really a, a global uh, a website at this point, you know, it's just, it's wonderful to, to feel that um, as a patient, you know, your, your contributions are valued by the organizers, you know, a lot of times they just want us to show up with signs and, and gather signatures and walk lockstep instead of being part of the process. Well, I like the part that everyone has a fundamental right to grow. <laughs> that has to be it. <laughs> that is the, the best part. <laughs> are, are you looking at the current draft that uh, Dave, uh, we just released? Um, uh, in, in, in that particular case, you're, you're absolutely right. It, it's very dynamic and it allows uh, personal use uh, as well as medical to be addressed properly. Medical is just referred back to the law of the current exists, so we're not uh, uh, infringing on that. And for personal use, obviously, we're opening up the door for people to have the freedom to do what they need to do. And if you really read the detail to it, in fact, that, that, that's something that you don't want to, I really want to comment on. That one of the real arguments that has come back and forth is the length of the document. And, and uh, there's a lot of uh, ways to explain that. It, it, uh, as an example, uh, if anybody's looked at uh, Proposition 8, uh, uh, you might see that there's been a lot of problems with the detail and how it's been worked out for a lot of years. Yeah. 
Um, a lot of the other propositions that came out, a lot of the other initiatives that came out, uh, we studied them. We studied the, the failures. We certainly studied what was, came out of the Supreme Court decisions, both in the PAC and the Riverside Inland Empire case. And what we learned, and was clearly dictated by the U.S. Supreme Court, was we were going to be in trouble if we left anything out. Excuse me, not the U.S. Supreme Court, but the California Supreme Court. Uh, they made points that we clearly know the reason they were able to take action on zoning is because we did the proper bridge wasn't in the document to say they couldn't do that. And so as we researched this and as the thousand advocates and dozens of legal experts researched this document, it began to grow up to a specific need that we needed to address everything so that if we didn't do it, we didn't get caught by the courts or by others not addressing it. And so that's why it's come to the light. But Another very good comment for everybody is um, there was a uh, document created by Americans for Safe Access for Medical. Mm -hmm. That particular document, as we all know, uh, uh, was a, a well-done document, specifically for medical only, and that was a 15-page document. We're addressing a medical, adult use, hemp, and cannabis entirely in about a 12-page document. Okay. Probably condensed down to about eight or nine. And some of the comments that have come to us, uh, again, from our own legal experts and others are, first of all, they've never seen this open source opportunity to allow so much contribution and so, uh, so much participation, but that also uh, uh, it, it includes so much detail that they can't even imagine how anything could be even appropriately addressed by the courts or by the public. I think one of the things that, you know, I kept reading in the commentary by the Cal California Supreme Court was, well, you didn't say thou shalt not ban, and, and you're, you know, and, and, and that's something we heard again and again and again, is no, we didn't say thou shalt not ban, and they kept saying, well, the legislators can, could have put that in there, and I guess one of the questions I think that'll, that'll uh, come up in, in political circles is, well, you know, uh, Steinberg and Leno are working on something through the state legislative uh, process, and why don't we just go that route? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, my first, you know, the first thing that I've noticed is, is it doesn't seem like anyone in the state legislators is, is, is willing to um, address the issues of bans in rural counties. You're running out of time. We only have about five or seven minutes. You may have to cut this one short. Okay. Um, John, I want to thank you so much for coming on and, and, and giving us yeah, the, the background. Um, is, is, is Dave back yet? Sean, sure, just as you asked, he just walked in walk the door, so, so perfect timing. Cool. Yep. Yes, there will be another show in August. <laughs> August Dave, 10th. are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you? Good, good. Welcome, Dave Hodges. So we got a lot of background from, from John Lee, but um, he said you also might have some exciting announcements, which I'm not sure what that is, or maybe we don't have exciting announcements from you, but a lot of what we've covered is just the appreciation of the inclusion and the open source. And um, please, you know, t tell, tell us all a little bit more about this awesome... Uh, awesome language that uh, is going to be on the 2014 uh, 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 ballot for California voters. Yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, that's, that's kind of the exciting news is that the meetings that we have had and been in in the past uh, three or four days really uh, solidified the fact that we are 100% sure this will be on the 2014 ballot. Um, we're working with the yeah, it, it, it's huge. We're, we're, you know, we still have a long ways to go. We're still going to need a lot of help. Um, the, the language is still open for review. Uh, but very shortly, we're going to close the language community review and give it to the attorneys that will help us get it for the Secretary of State and the summary process so we actually make it on the ballot. Awesome. So sure. I mean, that, that, that's really exciting that we know for certain it's going to be on the ballot. Um, we know that the voters are going to get a chance. And, you know, like one of the things that John touched on that I thought was really important, too, is that a year ago we weren't polling as high, you know, and now we know that, that we very possibly California once again could be the leaders in compassionate care, could be the leaders in ending prohibition. 
and supporting hemp agriculture. Do we wow. Have two DJ? There's two minutes for DJ. So it looks like we only have about two minutes left. Um, so I think we're going to have DJ come on um, our next show. Um, mm, that'd be great. Would that be okay, Denise? We can still talk a little bit after 6.22, I think. Okay. So should we, should we, uh, okay, we're just kind of trying to, to figure out what we can cram in a small amount of time that we have in the studio. And you know, we're both you know, the, the most important thing for me is for people to, to actually view the current version of the language and make sure that they're comfortable with it because we are moving forward and, um, you know, we're definitely going to make this happen. So now that the language Which is still... The drop dead date that people need to have in their mind, I have to look at this document by this and this time to get any input. When is well, I, I don't have the date yet, but that was one of the meetings I was in today, and I should have that date tomorrow, but absolutely no later than the end of the month, and um, depending on what our advisors say, it might be a little bit shorter than that. So really, we're, we're talking there's about a week, maybe two weeks max left before we really have to lock the language down and give it to the attorney. I like the fact that there's no, pro, uh, no criminal penalties for anything. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, the, worst, the worst penalty we did uh, in anything was an infraction and a, a diversion program to ensure that there's still at least some sort of penalty, but it's not anything that's going to put anybody in jail. And I just, I, I, for my reason why 2014 is because we have too many people in jail in California. Matter of fact, they're even forcing uh, us to let people out because of the medical conditions. Why would we wait till 2016? I'm going to keep saying that because 2014 is the time to... Trayvon. 